Will a wedge that has no grooves on it be able to spin the golf ball? And then what happens when we hit it in some kind of normal playing conditions? Maybe there's a little bit of dew on the ground. Maybe you catch a little bit of grass. What will happen when the wedge gets some water on it? What will happen to the spin then? And to get started, let's go ahead and start with my normal grooved wedge, my Ping Glide 4.0. It's a 60 degree wedge. This thing spins it like crazy. It's the best wedge I've ever had by far. I am a Ping ambassador, so I'm a little bit biased, but uh, not really biased. I put on these machines. This thing, is, this thing is amazing. It's really good. So let's go ahead and start with a full swing here just to get a baseline, see what that's going to do with my normal wedge, and then we'll kind of take it from there. There we go. Hit that one really nice. Now I have flight, show, flight scope to show the data and to show the shot shape. Said it went 105 yards. Uh, the spin was 11,422. I'm confirming that with my GC quad. So it said it went 98 yards. So six, seven yards difference there. Uh, that's pretty typical because they're measuring it differently. You're gonna see slight differences like that in these machines. 11,449 RPMs of backspin on my quad. And I'll just take a quick picture of that. So you'll be able to see it on the video. And you can see that lots of high spin there. 11,000 is pretty daggone good. Now, what happens when we take it over to our grooveless wedge? So again, Ping was nice enough to send me one of just a handful of wedges they made like this to do some testing with. It has no grooves on it, and we're gonna try it out. So it's virtually the same club. This is a 58 degree instead of a 60, uh, but I've done a lot of testing with these clubs and different lofts clubs. The numbers should be very, very similar when you're only talking about a couple degrees difference in loft. Uh, so this should get pretty similar numbers if the face is grabbing and creating that spin. Now, pretty cool to hit this because it doesn't quite happen like you think it's going to. This one says it launched at 29.1 and the quad agrees 29.9. Let's see what happens in the launch angle and spin rates when I hit this grooveless one. Let's give it a whirl. All right, so maybe just a fraction off the toe. 117 yards, <laughs> 28 vertical launch. So really close on the launch, a little bit extra distance. It's got two degrees less loft. You expect a few more yards, but that's uh, about 12 more yards. That's quite a bit. This one's saying 106 carry. So it's saying farther on the quad too. And if you look at the spin rate on the quad, it's saying it's still up there in that 11,000 range, 11,170 RPMs of backspin. So both of them are still saying high spin. I found that there's nothing that beats the quad for short indoor numbers like this. So the quad is incredibly consistent. And I've hit a lot with this wedge and I found that. It's crazy as it believes, no grooves at all. It's still spinning really high. So the quad's saying it's spinning the same RPMs as when we hit with the grooved wedge. And what that's showing you is, is if there's clean ball, a premium golf ball, I'm hitting my Snell MTBX here. Um, I'm hitting a clean club, I'm hitting off a mat, there's nothing in the way, everything's bone dry. You're gonna see really similar numbers to a grooveless wedge and a grooved wedge. Let's go ahead and hit one more here. That one felt pretty much the same. I said 120 yards. Uh, the launch was 29, and on this one, we're going with 106 yards and 10,844 RPMs of spin and the launch was 29 here too. So what it's showing you is, maybe it goes a little bit farther because a few extra, few less degrees aloft, spin rate is still really high. Now let's imagine that we're playing out of some dew. So I'm gonna kind of spray some water on the face. I might even get a golf ball and dunk it in the water a little bit. And this is really cool, you're gonna like this. So when I make a full swing here, remember the launch was around 28, 29, spin was up around 10, 11,000. Now let's hit the one with water. <laughs> so you'll notice right away, it shows it on the radar, just going straight up in the air. I was hitting the screen about right here when I hit the grooveless and grooved wedge, maybe right around in here. That one hit the screen right up there. It would have hit straight into the ceiling if I didn't have that cloth on the top. Instead of it launching at high 20s, that launched at 47 degrees of loft and the spin went down to 424 RPMs of spin. So all the spin's gone, especially a knuckleball. It's pretty interesting too, 
The quad actually gets that carrying 118 yards. The flight scope reads it a little bit different, saying it only went 84 yards. But, but either way, it's saying that ball launched straight up in the air and it was a straight knuckleball. No spin on it whatsoever. I'm getting, flight scope says 4,000 RPMs of spin. There's just no way that happened. I've hit these shots. It's, it's basically just a pure knuckleball. So 400 RPMs of spin. So it went from 10, 11,000 down to 400. And that's showing you what the grooves really do. So when you have grooves on a club face and there's water there, the water sinks down into the grooves and the ball still makes contact with the metal of the club and you get that, that friction, that traction on the golf ball. Same thing happens in your car when you have radial tires or, or groove tires. The water goes up into the grooves and you can still drive even when it's raining outside. If you took drag slicks with no grooves on it, it's gonna hydroplane and basically it's just saying that the water gets trapped between the club face and the ball, in the example of a wedge, and the ball slides. Or if you're in your car, the water gets trapped between the tire and the road, and the, the tire and the road aren't actually touching, and you hydroplane, or your tire just slides over the road. Same things happen here with a wedge uh, with no grooves on it. So you're basically hydroplaning your wedge. And here in a second, I'll give you a few tips on how to get great spin, hit some great wedges. Let's do the same thing now with a grooved wedge. We'll do the exact same test to where we dunk the golf ball in there, we put the wedge with water on the face. I mean, this is quite a bit of water. This is basically the same as if you're playing in pure dew, but this one has grooves on it. Let's see what happens to this golf ball when I make another full swing. There we go, a little bit higher. That one said 98. Instead of launching at 27, 28, it launched at 31, so just marginally higher. My flight scope is saying 8,100 RPMs of backspin. Let's look at the quad. It's always really good at getting the spin numbers indoors, especially when the face is kind of crazy like this. This one says 9,175 RPMs of backspin, 32 degrees launch. So again, a little bit higher and about 94 yards. So what it's showing you there, even soaking wet face, wet golf ball, instead of it launching straight up in the air, losing all the spin, like a grooveless wedge, this one kept almost the same amount of spin, 9,500 RPMs versus about 11,000 when it was a normal shot with a dry club and a dry face. So now that we know this, you know, what's some good tips to keep the club from hydroplaning uh, when the conditions are less than ideal? Let's actually hit one more here with this grooved wedge. I'm going to get it wet again, but I'm going to make some what I would call bad technique. So I'm gonna go ahead, put a little water on the golf ball, a little bit on the club, and now I'm gonna use a technique that I would say is not good that I see a lot of people using, and the numbers should actually come down on this one lower than the 9,000. So let's go ahead and give it one more full swing with bad technique, and I'm gonna show you the good technique. Yeah, there we go. So that one I'll get to in a second, I flipped it. And by flipping it or scooping it, what I meant there, Instead of having shaft lane, hands in front, I went ahead and let the club pass the hands and had a lot more loft. So now my GC quad is saying 8,500 RPMs of spin, so I lost another 1,000 RPMs. And the interesting thing there is the ball only carried 76 yards. Swung the same speed, but the ball carried much shorter, 76 yards versus 90, 95 yards, 100 yards, depends on which swing it was. This one also says that it's shorter at 82 yards. Shortest distance by far, lowest spin rates by far when I scooped it. So that's really the key. If you wanna get the most performance out of it, you wanna make sure that you're leaning the hands forward. And there's a great trick to this. On my upper back, what I wanna feel like I'm doing is I wanna feel like, I almost imagine there's a logo in between my shoulders here, like you'd have on the back of the shirt, some shirts. I wanna get that facing more down at the ground. So the more I can cover it with my chest, the more my body can stay down here, then I can get a lot of shaft lean. You see, if I back up, my upper body comes more level with the ground, stand up out of my posture, what happens is I have to reach to be able to hit the golf ball, and I have to get rid of all my shaft lean to be able to reach the golf ball. If I feel like I'm down closer to the ground, then I can really compress it and get a lot more shaft lean, hit it very, very clean. In addition to that, put a little back in your stance. That'll help you to get a little more shaft lean. And then make sure that as you're coming through there, your hands feel like they're leading the way 
and you're just letting everything rotate open. Now the last little key here that makes a huge difference, make sure I'm not coming over the top. I don't want to steepen it up and come this way. I need to shallow this club out from the inside, make sure that I'm hitting a nice little draw or at least a nice straight shot like this when I'm doing it. So let's go ahead and try one more here using those tips. Again, wet face, wet golf ball, and I bet you I'll get even a little bit more spin as I de-loft it more. And I'm really looking for, especially with the wet face, that last one with the wet face where I flipped, launch angle was 39 degrees. That's way too high. I wanna get that ball instead of launching this way, be much more penetrating. So I'm gonna feel like I stay in my posture, hands in front, make sure I come from the inside as I'm doing that so it's not just a glancing blow. And uh, we'll give it a whirl here. There we go. So even with that wet club, wet ball, 105 yards carry distance, the launch went down to 30 instead of 38 or 39 when I flipped it. The spin on here is 8,500, the spin on this one is 10,000. So that's showing you there that if you use good technique, even if the ball is wet, even if your club is wet, you can still hit some really good quality golf shots as you're doing this. So make sure that you feel like you're almost on top of the golf ball your hands will feel much closer to the ground and then you have to lean them forward to not hit down on the turf. So those hands are forward and you can rotate through it. You're just brushing the turf like this. All right, now, one thing we have to get right with this, as I mentioned, if I'm coming down steep with this club shaft and I stay in my posture, now all of a sudden I'm chopping down in the ground. We have to shallow this club out, get from the inside. Then when we stay in our posture, the club is just gliding through the turf and you can compress it like we talked about in this video. Now there's one trick that most everybody does that when they start their downswing the wrong way with the move I'm going to talk about here in a second, the club shaft gets steeper rather than shallowed out. I'm going to play a preview of this video here in one second. All you need to do to see the full video is go ahead and click the card that pops up somewhere on the page here. If you don't see that card, don't worry, go down to the description below. There'll be a link there to get instant access to that video. And let's go ahead and get started. I can't wait to share this with you. When you shallow it out, you can come in with more shaft lean. You can keep your posture. You hit your irons better, you hit your wedges better, you hit your driver better. Everything is just a lot easier when you're coming down on the correct plane. So I wanna make sure that I show you how to do that. Let's go get started right now. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being out driven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now, your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now, I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move, and that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 